Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I give them a choice, sit down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and buy your antiques for a cash offer on the table today. 240, I don't think so. If that's not enough money, there's an alternative. Place the same goods into an auction and hope to get a little bit more money there, but it is a gamble. Today the show comes to you from Rickmansworth in Hertfordshire. There's a great crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They're ready to sit down with our dealers. They're ready to talk business. They're ready to walk away with the real deal. At the start of the day, the crowd is winding its way into the den. Hello, Robert. I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. So, let's see Hi. what's appeared on Mark's table. You brought me in two little ivories here. Any history on them? How did you come by them? Uh, I bought them about five years ago from a local auction. Mm -hmm. um, they caught my eye, but now I like to sell them. Other things come into play, That's so it. you need to sell these. That's it. Well, I'm sure you're well aware these were made around about 1890, 1900. They're two Okimotos. Um, Probably like the, the washerwoman there, woman. yeah, the, doing the floor. And this is an older, another, a, a washerwoman again, but doing the clothes. Um, nice quality. Somebody would sit down and carve these and dye them. I mean, it's a real piece of work. I mean, they didn't really have that much else to do. There was no TV in those days. And this was their pastime. If you actually look at the way that they've engraved on the little leaves here, and the pattern here, and the fine lines for the hair. Mm. Um, and I think possibly, Bobby, the better quality, obviously, the more saleable. Mm -hmm. So it now only comes down to the money. So I'm going to make you an offer for them. Um, so I'm going to put my hand in my pocket. What do you think about that? Sounds good. All right, let's see what we've got. 50. 100. 120. 140, 150 pounds. How does that sound, Robert? Not quite what I had in mind. Not quite Not what quite you had, had in mind. In mind. No. So, what are we saying? You were, a little going, bit more? you were going good with a 50s and then um, and then you went wrong with the 20s. Red's your favourite <laughs> colour? It is, certainly, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I can go a little bit more, Robert, but it isn't going to be a lot more. I'd rather tell you that now. I mean, let, 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 let's see what we can do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You like red, don't you? Mm -hmm. So. I'm going to take those off of there, and I'm going to put a red one down to where we were, so that's 150. That's right, yep. Then I'm going to go 170. How does that sound? Uh, no. Still not enough. Not enough. No. So, one more. I'm going to put a £10 on there. £180 on it. I'd be happy with 200 You'd be happy with 200 200 And we've got 180 on the table now. Well, Robert, you've made an effort today to come in and I really appreciate you letting me have a look at them. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do. There's another 20 quid. Okay, thank you thank very, you very much. much indeed. Thank now. you, Robert. Now we head over to Michael's table where an intriguing object has arrived. So, Harold, tell me about what you've bought in. Oh, it's a 1928 radio. Yeah made by a company called AC Cossa. And this particular one is called a Melody Maker. Melody Maker. A Melody Maker. Should we have a look at it? Yes, of course. What a cracking bit of thing. That's what you call an old radio, isn't it? Very old, yes. And we're talking 1928? That's right. This is like being Doctor Who. It's a moment in time, really, isn't it? Because yes. you're like a time traveller. When you see things like this, you go back and back and back. And you can imagine a family of four and all listening to Frankie That's Vaughan right. or someone That's like right. that. Who would have been on the radio in 1928? <laughs> Maybe you can remember, I can't. Well, I'm not that old, Harold. <laughs> so why are you selling it today? Well, I've got a collection of them and I'm just having a change round. Yeah. I take the, them all to the, one of the British Legion branches and people come in and it, to see them and it helps the poppy fund on their collector's night. Brilliant. Well, great idea. Yes. Well, I'll make you an offer. I'm not an expert, I'll be honest with you. If I'm under, don't be insulted, because I really don't know what it's worth, OK? Yes, of course. But let me just try a few bids, shall we? 
Let's try a 20, 40, 60, 80. How about 100 pound for it? No, no, that, uh, that won't do it, I'm Am I a long way out, Harold? You're a pretty long way out, yes. Okay, let's try a little bit more then. 120, 140, 160. How's that grab you? No, it doesn't grab me at all, 160. I'm in the dark, I really am. It's a very rare radio. To be honest, Hoggy, you shot me a little bit because you put £160 down yeah. on an earlier radio, which I would have looked at, and respectfully to our seller, I would have thought, that seems like a lot of money, but I have spoke with our independent valuers and they say 250 to £300, pounds, but apparently there have been similar examples yeah. within that price range. I'm going to say to you, sir, look, this is very specialised. That is very spendable. It's a very good offer. So, Harold, there is a sound advice for you. It's either take it to the auction. I could put another 40 quid down if you're tempted. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll try and tempt you. I can see you're a very generous man. 200. But in all honesty, auction, you could get 400 for that. It is rare, you know that. You're an expert yourself. I'm just gambling. I'm only going to sell it again if I do get it. It's not going to, you know... Would you like to gamble a little bit further? Just another no. £20? Pounds. No, oh, in all honesty, I think I've gambled enough, Harold. Hmm. Well, if that's your maximum offer, is it? It is indeed, I'm afraid. Hmm. All right, I think we'll do a deal at Let's 200. do a deal, Harold. How's that? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. What are you going to do with the money? Uh. Well, I was married for 54 years yesterday, so uh, I might give my wife a pound. <laughs> Take her out for dinner. <laughs> I might do it well. Why not? She's lovely. This next item is a style statement, but will it catch Debbie's eye? Now, tell me what you've brought in today. Well, this, this is a vase that was a gift given to me. Um, it's a trico one. Um, that's about as much as I know about it. Um, it was brought when my brother was on holiday in Cornwall. OK. Um, and I think probably I've had it since about 70s, 80s. I'm right. not quite sure. Well, that, that date would completely figure with the vase. Oh, right. Completely figure. It's quite an interesting pottery. It started in 1963 down in St Ives in Cornwall and they started this very unique form of pottery which, I mean, most people know that that's a piece of Troika because yeah. it has such a, a classic design. And then it moved um, to Newlyn in the 70s which I guess is around the time you say your brother bought it for you. That Possibly, yes. Right. Is he going to be cross when he sees you're selling well, it? Let's just say I've not told anybody that oh, I am. <laughs> oh, I hope he's not. Not that I, d I dislike it particularly, but it doesn't really fit in with what I've already got. OK. I would like to try and buy it from you. OK. And it is a sweet little piece. Let's see how we go. 20. £40. Mm. I, think, I think it's worth it more than that. A lot more than that. Well, I, th I think, yeah, a lot more. How would another 20 be? Perhaps a little bit more. I don't want to pay any more for it. No, and it's that's... not something that I deal in. But Troika is terribly popular. All you need are two people who want, want it. it. Yeah. So what do you feel? I think I will take it to auction. OK, well, good luck with it. Thank and you very much. Hello. And thanks for bringing it in. Oh, I've really enjoyed my day. Thank good. you. Good. So it's over to auction. Let's see how the Troika does under the hammer of William Rouse. You sat down with Debbie, one of our dealers, and she offered you £60. Yes. Yeah. Now, you turned that down. Why did you turn that down? Well, I didn't feel that she really wanted it and appreciate it, so I'd rather it went to somebody that would appreciate it. 
I think the £60 offer was a little bit on the low side for this particular model. It's coming up now. Are the people here for Anita's piece of Troika? Let's find out. I'm glad to say I've got a bit of interest in it straight off. I'm bid £75. Me at £75 for the Troika. I'll take 80 in the room at £75. 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. Where is 100? 110 there. One ten. That's good. One twenty. <gasps> That's good. That's what we want to see. <gasps> the doorway then at one hundred and thirty. You all done then at one hundred and thirty pounds in the room at one hundred and thirty. It goes for one hundred and thirty. One eight five. No missing. One hundred and thirty pounds. Take away the commission. One ten. Happy. Thank you. Very happy. Yes, I'm happy. Any idea what you'll do with this one hundred and ten? Because the Troika vase has been around for a while. Mm. You haven't really done anything with it. No, but well, I'm going to sort my back room out, so we're going to decorate. And, bit of decorating. And a bit of furniture. Get some furniture in there. Okay. Perhaps towards a bit of furniture. Perhaps towards a little bit of decorating. But on the day, Anita is very happy. She's going on with one hundred and ten pounds. That's because she made the right decision. <laughs> That's the real deal. Coming up, is this deal hanging on a thread? So what, do we move this one and pull this one? Or is Mark just stringing us along? Oh dear, it's too hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> the electronic games are for me. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Rickmansworth in Hertfordshire. And it's over to Ian's table where there's a rather unusual pair of vases. Cressonny. I imagine that they are Chinese. Yes. The Cloisonne, 19th century, late sort of late 19th century, 1880, 1900 probably. Yes. And uh, in fairly good condition. Yes. Um, may I ask whether you have a large collection of Oriental or did you just acquire them? Just acquired them. Just acquired yes, them. Yes. Very lovely. Uh, why mm. is it you selling them? Well, we haven't displayed them for years and years. They've just been. <laughs> in storage sort of thing, and it seems a waste not to, to see them at all. We don't have, we've got enough things on display. And you have no idea where you got them from? Got them, uh, it must have been about 15 years ago. At a, it was a funny sort of auction. It was a, one of these weird ones where it's just a one day one and you never see the people the again. The auction again? No, again, it was just, I, I thought they were nice and I bought them. Even though they are, as you said, been in storage for a while, they've right. lost their sheen. They would have quite right. a nice sheen to them, which they don't seem to have. And they're also and pretty old. <laughs> yes, 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 I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. You know, have you ever mm -hmm. washed them or anything like that? Never, You've no. done nothing mm -hmm. with them? Nothing at all. So, maybe that's an item to first start with them, giving them a good wash to see whether <laughs> they will come up any better. Because right. There is a lot of detail in them. I mean, the birds and the flowers, uh, you know, it's really lovely. Yes. And I like cloisonne. Do you know the process of making of cloisonne? Uh, it's, it's wire introduced, and in between the wire, there's sort of enamel. Enamel wire, yes. yes. So what they do first is they produce the design that they want to create, then right. they put the wire onto the object, which they're going to work on, and then right. they inlay it with the enamel work. And when it's finished, you have this wonderful design that you would never even know. The wires, half of the time, are not even invisible. You know, right. it's just so lovely. And I think it's a fantastic thing. Mm. Well, I'm just going to make you one offer on them. Right. And I hope it's a good one, and I hope you accept it. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. I might be totally wrong, I don't know. 50, 100, 150. That's what I would like to pay for them, because I need to do work on them. Right. You know, um, how you feel about that, I don't know. Well, I think that's very fair. You think it's a fair offer? Mm. Very good. You accept my offer for I 150? Yes. That was a quick decision. <laughs> it's just, yes, well, this. Thank, thank you. you. So we have a deal on that. Yeah. Great. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Now, on a completely different note, David's invited Richard Cole from the Musical Museum in Brentford, Middlesex, to share his passion for music boxes. How many years have you been involved with mechanical music? I've been involved in mechanical music about 43 years, and I've been a volunteer at the museum for 41 years, which frightens me. 
It obviously takes a certain kind of man, Richard. Apart from these wonderful items that you brought along, which are the property of the museum, you are a collector yourself. I am indeed. There's a house full of things like this. House full of musical instruments, but no television. <laughs> no television. No television. <laughs> a rarity in these times. What you've got to bear in mind is, in the heyday of these items, when they were produced, we didn't have the distractions of the telly this was a kind of entertainment, a family entertainment, where you gathered in the parlour. That's right, in the front room, where you only ever went on a Sunday. I remember it very well, yes. because yes. as a little boy brought it with my granny, we used to go into the front room uh, on a Sunday, and I was shown little uh, uh, pieces of her collection, but also a big treat was the wind-up gramophone, right. where I'd often hear the skater's waltz. Oh, lovely. That stayed with me forever. <laughs> OK. One of the early pieces here, the music box. This little cylinder musical box, made in Geneva, about 1840, and uh, it has just four tunes in it, and when you've played them, that's it. OK. Now, what about this disc machine over here? This is a small Britannia disc musical box, and disc musical boxes came out to get over the problem of being stuck with just a couple of tunes, because you could buy discs Put the disc on your musical box, like you do a CD these days. Absolutely. And out comes the latest hit tune of the day. Come on, give us a whirl. What have we got here? Goodbye, Dolly Gray. Goodbye, Dolly Gray. Mm. Great. Great sound. Lovely. OK. Now, coming forward, what about this machine here? This is one of the early examples of a musical machine operated by a paper music roll. Is it an organ, a bellows inside It's, it's what they call an organette, and it has bellows in it yes. and a series of reeds, a bit like a giant mouth organ. OK. Let's give it a burst. <laughs> Amazing. How many tunes on this, on this organ? There's, I think there's about ten on that music okay. roll. Quite short. And could you replace the rolls on these? You can take the roll out and put a different one in. Okay. And the rolls were much less expensive than either the cylinders or the discs. One thing that jumps out at me, Richard, is when you were unpacking your collection here, the face starts to light up <laughs> and there's a smile there. And in many ways, I find that very enjoyable because I know what kind of enjoyment you are getting. What surprises me is even today, you and your partner, you haven't got a TV in the house. You don't miss one. I haven't had one since 1977. That, long time, is music to my ears. Back in the dealer's den, and will Mark be pulling the strings on his next deal? Now, it's pretty obvious what we've got here, a puppet, but does it have a name? No. No name? No name. Your puppet? My puppet. When you were childhood, growing yes. up, using it, playing yes. with it? Yes, yeah. when I was six. Six? Yes. Right. Giving away your age a bit there. Yeah, know. I am. Uh, yes. Well, it's definitely a puppet, as we can see, hey. made by Pelham Puppets Limited. Yeah. Made in the 1950s? In the 50s, yes. Has it got a story or two to tell? No, she was just a present that my parents bought me for my last holiday with them. No, not last holiday, it was a holiday, and at the end of the holiday we had a present and I chose a puppet. You chose a puppet? Yes. Right. Was there only one of them? Because normally these can come in twos. This is obviously the female puppet, but there might so, have been the male yeah, puppet. Yeah, my brother had the male puppet. Uh, and he took it away from you? He did, oh. so, and then it was stolen. Oh, dear. So, so this poor lady puppet is all on her own. All on her own. And she wants a new home. She does. So you brought it to us. Yes, because she just lays in the drawer. Just sits there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I've got to do this. I've got to have a bit of fun. I want to become the puppet master. So right. let's have a little look. Oh, there we go. Do you think I can get the job? Um, it has to be a bit more movement. A bit more movement? Yes. Right, OK. So what, do we move this one and yeah, pull this one? Yeah, you need a walker. Need a walker? Oh dear. I, oh, I don't Blue think. Blue streaks. Oh no. This, um, it's too hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> the electronic games are for me. Very nice. 
Right, have you any idea what it's worth though, Brenda? Oh, let's put that back up there. No, I didn't. No idea? No idea. No idea at all. I don't think it's a great deal of value, this item. No. Um, and to be perfectly honest, if I probably buy it, I'll probably give it to somebody as a present because it's out of my field. But I'm going to make you an offer for it and it's entirely up to you, Brenda, whatever you'd like don't to do. Know. But let's put a little bit of money on the table for you, all shall right. we? Ten pound, Brenda. No. No? no. You're going to make me pay more for it? Yes. Don't you think I was good enough on the puppet, you know? No. No? Oh. OK, look. Yeah, let's go inside. How about another tenner, Brenda? Mm, no, a bit more. You're making my work very hard, hard today. Right, this is it, Brenda. I'm going to put one more on the table, but I can assure you that's going to be the finish for me. It's £30 on the table. It's entirely up to you. What would you like to do? Deal. Deal? Thank yeah. you, Brenda. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up... Is Michael in for a nasty shock? Have you got a price in mind? Yes, but I'd, I would make you go grey if I told you. I'm already grey. Look at me. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Rickmansworth. With the deals coming thick and fast today, let's shoot straight over to Debbie's table. Pleased to meet you and thank you for bringing this box in. You're welcome. Tell me what the box is and where you got it from. Well, it's an inherited piece and I think it's a sewing box. Right. It's got lots of little sections and a little pin cushion in it, so I think it's definitely a sewing box. Do you mind if we have a look inside? No, that's fine. What's interesting is the minute you open it, you can see how lovely and clear mm. the outside would once have been that's right, before yeah. it had been rubbed because the inside is absolutely beautiful. Um, you've got these little compartments which lift out, which have got this incredible, ornate um, design and pattern on them. There's one on each side, both of which are different. And I think there are little ivory knobs on the tops of those. Okay. And some of these compartments have got areas for, for uh, pens or, as you say, sewing implements. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make you an offer okay. based literally by me putting my finger in the air because it's going to be a gut feeling about the piece, but I, I like it and I will give, give it a go. Okay. 20. 30. I saw an eyebrow go up. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Keep going. <laughs> 20. 40. 160. I think it's worth a bit more than that because of the age of it. It's, it's not about the age of the piece. What I, would, as a dealer, would love is to find the outside the same as the inside. Yeah. Now, that's not going to happen. It's a utility box. It's been used, I would guess, by your grandmother. Is it your grandmother? Yeah. As a sewing box, and she's clearly loved it and used it. Mm. So my offer, I feel, is quite a generous offer for the condition in which it's in. And I really would stick there at okay. 160. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I think it's a good offer and I'm happy to take it. All right, Anne. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for bringing okay. it in. You're welcome. Now that deal's nicely sewn up, let's head over to Mark where he's getting a golden handshake. And you've bought me in a very nice gold Albert chain here. Can you tell me a little bit about its history? Uh, belonged to my grandfather and I believe it was presented to him after he finished his work for factory. Right, OK. That might explain the fobs, I believe, belong to your grandfather also? Yes. Right, there's a, an inscription on this one. Yes. Which is the Interworks Cup, Napier VK 1915-1917. 
Was that anything to do with your uh, grandfather? I believe so. Yeah? I believe so. I believe he was an athlete for the works. Right. Well, I'm sure you well know you've got a nine carat gold Albert chain here, which is fully hallmarked on every link. Yes. Each one of these links has a nine carat stamp on it. We call this rose gold because it has a higher copper content added to it. So it gives it that rosy colour rather than the bright yellow chains you see of today, you know, the very bright modern chain. So, I mean, this would have been made 19, again, 1915, 1920. So any particular reason why you decided to sell the chain now? Um, because I have to pay for an engine for my VW camper van. Right. Uh, that sounds very expensive. Yes. Let's get some money on the table for you. Yes, please. I hope they're red ones. Oh, we're going to start with the blues. Oh. Don't worry. <laughs> There's no panic. One, two, three, four. It's 100, 120, 140, 160, 180. 200, 220, 240, 260 pounds. I can't squeeze a little bit more. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put one more on the table, but what I'm going to put, because the, it is very tight, I'm going to put another 10 pounds on the table there for you. That's 270 pounds. Change it for a blue one. Oh, goy, oh, you're being very hard. Ay. Right, OK, so if I take the brown one away and we put the 20 back on, that's the deal? I think so. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I love to have a trade. <laughs> one more on the table, too, and that's a deal. That's a deal. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> now, sometimes items have been living under a false identity for many years, and it's our dealer's job to work out their true origin. Tell me about what you got. Well, it's a, it's a bars. Yeah. My father used to be working up in Parade Street, Paddington, during the war. He used to do a bit of wheeling and dealing, as one does in those yeah. days. And he used to buy things from Charlie Dooley one side and sell it to Smithy the other side. And then occasionally something would come home. And that's what he left. He brought it home. Did he? <laughs> and uh, he, it didn't look much. And he always said to me, son, that's worth a lot of money. Really? I hope you're taking note of this. Yeah, I always do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm... And then somebody said, well, it's a bit funny to have something as beautiful as that with a bit of Bakelite stuck on top. Yeah. Well, I think I can solve that problem. You can? Because this would never have gone with it. Well, it seems to be You can discard an... that completely. Oh, really? That's yeah. half the price, isn't it? Yeah. And this is part of a cocktail shaker. It probably came out of a bomb-damaged house, you see. It might well have done, but this stands alone as a vase, yeah. doesn't it? It does. It's very and pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice bit of kit. It's silver overlay. Yeah. Unhallmarked, unsigned, un everything, really. It just yeah. it is what it is, really, isn't it? He always used to reckon it was Bavarian or something around There's that There's a area. chance it could be Bavarian or Czechoslovakian. Right. But it's well decorated, isn't it? It's beautiful. It's got that late 19th century look to it, hasn't yes, it? Yes, it has. It's very Art Nouveau, very yes. arts and craftsy. It is. And it looks better already without that in the top there, doesn't it? It does, actually. Do you know? So I think you can have that back when we are finished. Do you insist? Yeah. Oh, all right. It's never part of it. So in all honesty, these sort of things can do very well at auction. Can they? Yes, I'll be honest with you. I'll make you an offer, Mike, but I, you know, it might not be enough for the day. Right. But let me just try an offer, and you can tell me if you like me or not, you know? 20, 40. 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. 220, 240. That's just for the top, is it? No, that's for the bars. Oh, that's for the I'm bars. I'm letting you keep the top. I don't think so. Really? Mm, no. Have you got a price in mind? Yes, but I'd, I would make you go grey if I told you. I'm already grey, look at me. <laughs> So where do we get to? 240, Mike? That's right, yes. Okay. Let's try a little bit more then. Okay. 260, 280. No. Sorry. That's, really? Uh, I, I, I'm ambitious enough to say I thought it would have been at least twice that amount. At least. Ooh. Um, do you know I'm going to back down at 280? Are you? Yeah. All right. Well, that, that's I, me done. Thank you for uh, looking at it. Yeah, take it to auction. Indeed, yes. I think that's a wise choice. Thank you very much. Pleasure to meet you.
At the auction, and it's still with that lid. It is here in the sale room with a five to eight hundred pound estimation. Originally, you did agree to a four hundred pound reserve, right. and in the meantime, you've actually upped the reserve. Why have you done that? Somebody suggested it was worth more than that, and I thought, well, rather than see it go under the figure, I'd rather okay. keep it. Okay, so Michael has changed the, the base reserve up to 500, between five and eight, so it needs to make 500 pounds. Is there someone here in the sale room that will give that kind of money? Well, let's find out. Lot 60 is the um, silver overlaid vase. Pretty thing, lot 60. Start me 300 pounds for it to go. 300 and bid. Straight in at 300, 320, 340, 360. There are people here in the room. 360 and bid at 360, 380 anywhere. At 360 pounds, not quite enough at 360. 380. 380. Yeah. It's around the original reserve of 400. It's past that, but you've changed your reserve to 500 now. 480 pounds in the corner at 480. At 480 pounds, 480 is the bid. 480 it is only. 480 pounds. It stops. Close, wasn't it? So close. The original reserve was 400, it passed that, but now it got up to 480, the reserve was 500. Are you disappointed? In a way, yes, I am. Because I felt it was worth the 500. Yeah. I feel the same, I'm a little bit disappointed. I felt it could have done a little bit better on the day. It didn't quite make it here. It wasn't really the right thing perhaps to change the reserve. It may have been a bit ambitious. Though it got up to £480 here in the sale room, but didn't sell because of its reserve. Coming up after the break... Really, it's incredible. Made by Dalton with absolutely no doubt at all. Ian thinks he's on to a winner, but not everyone agrees. There are certain aspects of it which aren't quite Dalton-y, and I've never seen a bit of Dalton which isn't marked. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. This pot has caught the eye of Ian, and David and auctioneer William Rouse are watching the action with interest. What an amazing piece. Yes. Where did you get it? Um, it was my grandfather's, and uh, I brought it along on behalf of my father. Um, I'm not too sure where, where my granddad got it from. Um, you have no idea, no. your father has no idea? No. It's a shame. It would be lovely to know whether it came out of some big mansion. Because, I mean, a walking cane holder, a stick holder, umbrella holder, call it what you like, and to be in this condition, it's in absolute fantastic condition. I absolutely, absolutely adore it. It's incredible. It really, it's incredible. Made by Dalton with absolutely no doubt at all, you know. It's got no Dalton mark on it. No. But this floral design on the top is very typical of Dalton. You find it on the top of a, a lot of vases. The Acorn is another very popular design by them. You find it on a lot of chargers. The colour is very good. They've used all these colours in all their items. So it's an amazing example of colour and design. Now that's what I call a glamorous pot. And the obvious thing to say about it, it looks like it should be Dalton Lambeth. But there isn't a mark there. Now, come on, what's your feelings on this? Well, I think it makes quite, that makes quite a big difference because there's suddenly a whole load of ambiguity. And although I think it's a really good-looking object it's fun, and the quality is very good, there are certain aspects of it which aren't quite Dalton-y. In, in the, the glaze is the right colour, but it's the streakiness makes one just wonder, is it Dalton or isn't it Dalton? And I've never seen a bit of Dalton which isn't marked. So you can see the dilemma here. Our independent valuers were jumping up and down when they saw this. I have to say, when I first glanced at it, I thought, wow, what a fabulous pot. But as auctioneers, you were very calm. You said, no, there is no Dalton mark, and that makes all the difference. And to a certain degree, I think you're right. But what I would say is, because of the overall glamour of this, I think it's the type of object you probably couldn't resist. Now, Ian, 
is a man with style, with taste. I think he'll go for this. I think he'll love this. And he'll not go home until he gets it in his hands. Let's see what he puts on the table. So, let's do that. Um, 50. 100. 150. 200. 250. 300. Now, I think 300 is a very good offer. Yes, no, I was expecting a bit more than that. A little bit more? Um, quite a bit more. Quite a bit more? Yes. Well, I'm not going quite a bit more. I can go a little bit more. OK. okay. Um, Say I go 350. No. At 350, I think that's a good offer. Um, can I tempt you for another one of those red ones? I've walked in here at this stage because I think we're getting perhaps near to a final offer from Ian. And just before that goes onto the table, I can tell you that amongst our valuers and auctioneers, there are all kinds of different opinions. Our independent valuers are over the moon with it. They are saying, what a spectacular pot, four to six hundred pounds within the auction. The auctioneer, who are usually a more careful breed, they're saying, let's have a look underneath it. Now, there is no Dalton Lambert stamp under that pot. That's right. Now, my opinion is, if this isn't Dalton, it is possibly Staffordshire in a Dalton style, and at 400 quid, it's probably its money. But if it is Dalton, then I think it's worth more. I'm going to stay out of this, because I'm going to say, you're with Ian, he'll try a tempting offer, and then it's for you to say yes or no. What a cracking pot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So you've had David's opinion. I've got 350 on the table. You're not quite happy with that. No. So 400 now on the table. And I think I'm not, definitely not going higher than that because I am not taking the chance. I am taking the risk at 400. Um, is that your final offer? Yes. It is. Um, OK, we'll have a deal on that. We'll have a deal? Yep. OK. Thank very you. Much. Thank and you. I'm sure you'll enjoy the money with your father. Thank you very much. Thank you. So it just leaves us to find out how the dealers did with today's purchases. A bit more movement. Yes. Right, OK. So what, do we move this one and yes. pull this one? Mark gave the puppet to his friend who collects them and has sold one of the ivory figures for £150, which means he's well on the way to making a profit. Thanks so much for bringing it in. Debbie sold the sewing box for 240 Who would have been on the radio in 1928? Maybe you can remember, I can't. Well, I'm not that old, Harold. <laughs> Today's computer generation must prefer digital technology as the Melody Maker hasn't sold yet. It's an amazing example of colour and design. And the Dalton stick stand has now got pride of place in Ian's hallway full of his own walking stick collection. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. We've had a great day here in Rickmansworth. There's been lots of action, lots of buying and selling, just the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.